age distribution. And I think this was from my, uh, my first class teaching statistics here at the college. I, I taught a summer school class. And here was my distribution that we made up. Oops. I already screwed something up. What did I screw up? Yeah, otherwise 30 would be counted in two places. That wouldn't be good. Hey, just to kind of refresh your memory, I like to do this often also to kind of spiral some information. How many classes do we have here? So our classes are each individual group. What are our lower class limits? What's the first lower class limit? What's the next lower class limit? What's the upper class limit of the second class? Good, okay. What is our class width? Good, it's 10, it's not nine, right? It's 10, it's between the two lower class limits. You got that? So the class width is 10 here. Good, all right. Uh, what's our first class midpoint? Use your calculator if you have to. Do it in your head if you can. You got it. Anyone else get 25.5? Is that what you're thinking? How do you find the class midpoints? Add these two? No. Add these two. And then divide by two. Hey, we've already been doing that idea. That's the average again, okay? So yeah, the first class midpoint is 25.5. The next one is 35.5 because you can just add the class width to find sequential class midpoints. You with me still? Here's a tough one. What's the very first uh, class boundary? 20.5. 20.5 is the first class boundary. That's right. What's the next class boundary? Perfect. Very good. Okay, so we can't, we have the information back again. Um, here's the frequencies. we do the average or the mean of a frequency distribution. What we do is, since all of these 28 people might have been different ages in there, they're somewhere the same age, but you could have every age between 21 and 30, agreed? We don't really know what's what. What we do is we say, okay, since I don't know what's who's who and what's what in this, I'm going to pick a single value that I can use to represent all 28 of these people. Are you with me on this? The single value is going to be just the middle of our class, or in other words, a class midpoint that I just had you create. So right over here in this column, what we're going to do is put our x, but our x is going to stand for our class midpoint. Midpoint. And you already told me the class midpoints. It was 25.5, 35.5, 45.5. 45.5, and so on. I know it seems a little weird, and this is why it's an approximation, but here's what we're doing. Uh, we can't, we don't know the age of every single person here, so what we do is we pick the middle of our class, and we're going to pretend right now that every person, all 28 people, were 25.5 years old, okay? And every person here all 30 of these people were 35.5 years old. Do you get the idea? That's the only way we can calculate it. And so what we're going to do in order to figure out uh, our average, we're going to multiply f times x. That gives us all 28 at the age of 25.5. So you're multiplying the age of each person times all those people. So multiply this out. Uh, let's do this quickly here. Can you give me... Some people start working from the bottom because I want those numbers quickly. So uh, you guys start working from the bottom, you guys start working from the top. Top people, does anyone have 28 times 25.5? 714. 714, okay, very good. How about the next one? Quickly, quickly. Quickly but correctly. 1065. <laughs> Thank you. Next one? 546. 
This one? This one? One other? Yep. One thirty one. One thirty one. Perfect. Hopefully that math's right. If you double check, did someone double check those? Great. So we have all the frequencies times all of the values that we're considering each of these people to be. What this does, this gives us, if we add it up, all the added ages. See, think about it this way. This right here is all the added ages of 25.5. We added it 28 times. That's the repeated additions multiplication. Here, this is 35.5, all 30 times. If we add all this up, and divide by the total number of people, we're going to get our average. So add this up for me, please. Say that louder for me. And 18? And add this one up for me, because this is our N. 76. 76? Perfect. In order to find our average, what we're going to do is take the sum of F times X, which we just calculated that right here, divided by our n. So in our case, we have 2718 divided by 76. Give me that. How much? 35.76. Perfect. Seem about right? Look like the average is right around 35. If I consider all this stuff, it's out there. That's how we find a weighted, or sorry, uh, average of frequency distribution. How many people feel okay with finding this thing? Okay, good deal. Uh, that's going to end for today. We're not quite done. We have to do weighted averages. But what I'm going to do? All right. So like I was saying, today we're going to talk first about how to find a weighted mean or the mean of a weighted distribution. This is like, like I said, like in your class, our grades are weighted. In fact, when we look at our grades for this class, do you remember what your, your weighted grades were? How much homework was worth? So let's say homework. How much is homework worth for this class? 15%. 15%, that's right. So it's not really a point system, it's a percentage system. So 15%. So homework's worth 15%. And how many tests do we have in here? Three. So we'll have test one, test two, test three. How much is each of those tests worth? 20%. Is it 20? And there's one more thing. We have a final. Final's worth, I think that leaves 25%. So let's say you're taking this class, which you are, and you have this weighted, weighted uh, scenario for your grades. And we want to figure out what your grade's going to be at the very end. Well, that averages everything together. So here's how we find the mean of a weighted distribution. What we do, so here's our weights. We'll call those W. Let's see how many points you have. So we'll see how many points you have out of 100. Okay, so you did your homework. How many points do you want to have out of 100 points? Well, yeah, but what if you miss some? How much do you think you're really... Let's say that you, you do most of the homework, so you have like... Let's say you do 70 points out of 100. That's what you get. It's all said and done, 70 points. And then your first test... Are you going to do good in your first test? Yeah. You get like a 90% of your first test. 90 out of 100. So 90, these are all out of 100. Um, so one way that we could make this out of 100 is take your score, like the number of points you got, divide that by the total number of points, and that would give you something out of 100. Are you with me on that? It would change it to a decimal version of that. So this is the same idea. So you get 90 out of 100 in your first test. Second test, see, that's kind of hard. I'm just going to warn you. So second test, you got like a 68. Ooh, you have to bounce back from that one. Third test, you did really well, though, for the third test. You got an 85. And the final, what are you going to get on your final? It's cumulative. <clears throat> Be optimistic. 95. 95. We'll get 90. 95 is a very optimistic. Okay, that's good. 
So you got 70 points out of 100 for your homework. You got 90 points out of 100 for your test one, 68 out of 100 for test two, 85 out of 100, and 95 out of 100. Now keep in mind, if these aren't all out of 100 points, there's one very easy way that we can do this. Um, let's say that you actually had for your homework, because we're not just going to have 100 points of homework, we'll probably have more like 220 points or whatever. Let's say that you got 185 points out of a possible 220. Okay? This is one way you can convert that to points out of 100. You do this and then multiply by 100. Not a, th not a thousand. <laughs> You get a million points. Congratulations. <laughs> so you do the 185 over, over 220. How much is 185 over 220? It should be a decimal. Come on, you all have calculators. Point eight four zero. 8. So 0. 0.8, that point eight four is that what it is? Yeah. So this is point. 8, 4, and then to change it to one of these numbers, you multiply it by 100, and that's just going to be move the decimal place twice, you get 84. That's how many points you would get there out of 100. Does that make sense to you? So you can convert any point, any point scale into this scale, and that's what you would do for this class. So now, how in the world do we figure out what the mean of this whole thing is, what your grade is going to be for this. And it's very, very similar to the idea of a frequency distribution. Here's what we do. The first thing we have to do is calculate what percentage of this is weighted. So we're going to go ahead and take whatever our points are. Here our points are going to be our <clears throat> x variable. That's the data that, you, that you've kind of collected, right? You have 70 points out of 100. That stands for your, your, your data. If, you're, if this value, if your homework value is worth 15% of your total grade, what we're going to do is we're going to find out x times w for each region. Very much. Does this look familiar to the frequency distribution mean that we did last time? Really, really similar, only instead of a midpoint, now we're using the point value for your homework and for your tests, things like that. So can you tell me what is 15% of 70? Remember to translate 15% to a decimal, we're going to make that 0.15. You do that decimal place twice. What is 15% of 70? Say that again. 10.5. 10.5, OK. How about 20% of 90? Even? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I guess it would be, wouldn't it? I'll put 18.0 to keep it, keep it honest up there. 20% of 68, how much is that? 13.6. Perfect. 20% of 85. 17. And 25% of 95. 23.75. Ladies and gentlemen, are you okay getting these numbers? Do you see how these are being calculated? We're taking these x's, your point value, times each corresponding weighted value as a decimal. So here we're taking 0 0.25 times 95, 0 0.2 times 85, 0 0.2 times 68, and likewise 0.15 times 70, we're getting these values. What did we do in a frequency distribution after we got all these individual values? What did we do next? Say that again? Add yeah, That's right, we're going to add these all up. What this is going to give us, what's the symbol that we use for addition again in this class? It says add them all up. 